Right, let's do uh, the next question in the uh, flight time question series in the Jeppesen test guide on page 834, question number 857. Okay, I ran out of uh, fresh flight time sheets, so I, since I already have this information memorized, and you will too from having done it so many times, I'm just going to write the information out on a blank piece of paper. So, first thing I'm looking for are the airports. What is the estimated time and route for a flight from St. Marie's Airport to Priest River Airport? So, I'm going to write St. Marie's Airport, which is in Area 4, going to Priest River in Area 1. And then we get the typical given information. They give us the wind, which is 300 degrees at 14 knots. They give us the true airspeed, which is 90 knots. And, as they usually sneak in every once in a while, they add a time. So you put in added time equal to 3 minutes for the climb out. So, let me show you what I wrote. I didn't use the form, but this is exactly the same as the form. The airport from your where you're coming from, where you're going to, the areas they're in. They gave me the wind information, they gave me the true airspeed information, and they put in added time, which is three minutes. I have to find, using the chart, the um, distance between the airports, the true course between the airports, and then using the, the uh, flight calculator, we're going to find the ground speed. So. Let's go to the chart. The chart's on page 425. That's a popular one. So we go to 425. Let me just get the camera backed out so you can see it. Okay. First thing we do is identify the airports, and it's easier to do when you look at the areas. So I know we're going from St. Marie to Priest. So St. Marie is in Area 4. So here's Area 4. There's St. Marie right down here. We're going to Priest, which is in Area 1, which is up here. So you take your straight edge, put it right through the airports, like so. Lock that down to the page. Then draw your line so that it extends past the airports. Once you've done that, using the nautical mile scale, and remember you're on the, on the sectional side, I almost made the mistake, you're on the sectional side, the biggest spaces between the, the tick marks on the nautical scale, you want to measure the distance. And I have to throw this out of line for just a moment. But let's measure the distance between the two airports. And if you see, it's about oh, 51, 2, 3, 4. It's somewhere between 54 and 55. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, between 51, 2, 53 and 54. Uh, let's just say 54. Sometimes an even number is easier to play with. So I'm going to write down that the distance between the two airports is 54 nautical miles. Now, I have to find the true course between the two airports. Now, coming from St. Marie's, which is down here, I'm going up to Priest River. So, all I have to do is find where the line intersects a line of latitude. Here's a line of latitude right here. So I put a big dot on it. Actually, I'm going to use the one down here because I can actually see the line a little better. So you see how the line here crosses this line of latitude? So let's put the dot 
here. And let's put our plotter right on top of the dot and make sure that the flat part of the plotter is sitting right along the line of latitude. By the way, I want to warn you of something. This part here, there's a little shelf where it drops off right here, okay? The plotter is not exactly on the top of the straight edge. It actually is a little elevated from it. So you're going to see this part of the plotter below the line of latitude. But it's really this part of the plotter, this dark black line here, that you want to be in line with the line of latitude. And it is. So we know that if this is north, west, and this is east, we know that this dark line here is at an exact right angle to the line of latitude, which means this must be north. This is zero degrees, okay? So if this is zero degrees, or 360 if you want to look at it that way, you know it's straight north. If you go 10 degrees behind that, then that's got to be 350 degrees. And this would have to be 340 degrees. And it looks like it's coming out at 340, 345, about 346 degrees. So I would say the true course between the two airports is 346 degrees. So we're going to write that down. 346 degrees. And that's it. We don't need the chart anymore. We go back to our question, which was easy to find because we were smart enough to put a paper clip at the bottom of the page. And let's get to it. First we'll do our calculation. Now, we're looking for our ground speed. That's the next thing we're going to find. So, how do we do that? You know how we do it. We use the flight computer. So let's do it. Let me zoom out just a bit. Let's make sure the computer is cleared. It isn't cleared. There's a dot on here from my last question. Now the flight computer has been cleared. And let's set it to zero, so to speak, where we put the 100 arc right under the hole, the center hole. Okay. Now, let's enter the information that we have. First thing we know, we always put the true course under the true index. The true course we just found to be 346 degrees. So, let's do that. Let's put the true course, 346 degrees, right under the true index. Okay, we've done that. The next bit of information we use is the wind speed, which is 14 knots. So we count up 14 knots. So that's 10 knots, 12 knots, 14 knots. So we're going to put a dot right on the 14 knot dead center. Okay, so our dot is there. The next thing we're going to do is find the wind direction. The wind direction is 300 degrees according to the question. So we turn our compass to 300 degrees. And you'll notice the dot moved. Then you pull the slide the card so that the dot is under the true airspeed number, which is 90 knots. So you move the card so that the dot is right over the 90 arc, the 90 knot wind speed arc, right there. And the answer is sitting right under the center, right here. So let's look. We know this is 70 here, or and this is 80 here. It's not quite 80. And it's not quite 78. I think it's safe to say that this is 79 knots. So the ground speed here, can you see that? Let me put this perfectly in. Can you see in here and see that that's the 80 mark. It's not quite the 80, but it's not the 78. It's somewhere in between. So that makes it 79 knots. So we're going to write our ground speed is 79 knots. And if you've done enough of these, you've already memorized my formula, which is distance divided by ground speed times 60 minutes is your answer. Then you just add the added time. So let's plug the numbers in. The distance we measured is 54 nautical miles. 54 nautical miles. The ground speed we calculated with our calculator is 79 knots multiplied by 60 minutes. 
So let's do that math. I don't do this by hand, even though I could. I could do it with pencil and paper. I tend to make more errors when I do it by hand. That's why I use a calculator. It is not uh, a sign of, of lack of intelligence to use a calculator. I think it's more efficient and there's less room for errors. But that's my opinion. So we're going to take the 54 and divide it by the 79. So 54 divided by 79, you should be doing this with your own calculator. I come out with 0.683 something, something, something. Leave it there, multiply that by 60 minutes. Now I come out with 41.01 .01 minutes, so basically 41 minutes. So let's write 41 minutes. But is that the answer? No, because you have to add time. They gave us added time of 3 minutes, so you got to add the 3 minutes. That makes it 44 minutes. That is my answer. Let's see if we're right. We got 44 minutes. And let's see. 38 minutes, that's pretty far away. I'm not happy with that one. 43 minutes, that's a lot closer to 44. I would say that's the answer so far. And C is 48 minutes. That's way off. So my guess is it's answer B, 43 minutes. And sure enough, when you look at the answer here, it is answer B. Again, why wasn't I dead on? Why was I off by a full minute? Because there's error everywhere in the calculations. That's human. But think about it. We calculated the estimated flight time to 44 minutes. And it turns out the answer was really 43 minutes, one minute off. The airlines should hope to get in exactly on the minute. So that's good enough for the test, and that's good enough for real life. So that's good enough for me and you. Okay.